Oh, someone has joined. That's lovely. Hello. I'm just waiting for a couple of more eyes to uh, feast themselves on this little page. There we go. We're starting to climb in numbers. Come on in. Come on in and listen. Hear ye, hear ye, gather around. It's me, Alan Committee. Part-time family entertainer, full-time human shield for Bergfleet and Surrounds. Thanks so much for joining me uh, and welcome to this Tuesday night little chat, if you will, a uh, little community of laughter, I'm hoping. Uh, the brief is very simple from the Cape Argus, Argus and, and first of all, uh, a huge thanks uh, to them for inviting me to come and chat. Um, I've been asked just to kind of talk a little bit about my experience of lockdown and uh, to give some insight into the world of uh, the performing arts and where they are at at the moment. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I'm happy to take questions, so uh, feel free to uh, to say hello. Too excited for this, says Whitney O'Connor. Quite right, Whitney. Me too. I'm basically urinating. You can't see that, but that's something that I'm keeping to myself. And though I've shared it with you, it's uh, it's just for me here. Uh, Whitney, I don't know what you want to talk about, but you feel free to ask me any questions as we go along. Um, so first of all, let me tell you, I'm based here in Cape Town, uh, as I think most of you are, if you're readers of the uh, Cape Argus. But we might have some folk from upcountry as well and around the land. And happy lockdown to you all on this, the who knows how many days we're in, 102nd, I think. Um, Cape Argus has thanked us. Yes, we are live. We are alive. It's very exciting. It's uh, been a strange time. Hello, Alan, our favorite comedian. You're very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diane McMahon. Um, it's, it's been a very strange uh, three and a bit months, hasn't it? Uh, we keep thinking we've got a handle on what's going on, and then we realize actually we don't, because with every passing day, uh, something new is thrown at us. Uh, sometimes it's good news, and sometimes it's not such good news. Sometimes our president, president addresses us and gives us great clarity and a way forward, and other times, like at the moment, he's gone a bit quiet, hasn't he? And uh, we, we're just waiting. Everyone's looking from behind their little masks at each other, or waiting desperately to see what will be next, what's going to happen next. I think we all started with a real buy-in collectively as a country. We said, this is it. We're going to buy into this. We're going to look after each other. We're going to do it. It's 20 odd days of lockdown. And then it was extended. And then there was an initial, oh, that noise. You could hear that noise come across the country, couldn't you? Oh, it was very strong in parts of, of um, Lansdowne in particular. I don't know why Lansdowne was so kind of particularly vocal about it. But that's Lansdowne for you. You 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 can't really trust Lansdowne. Lansdowne is a loose cannon in terms of the suburbs. Possibly the only other uh, uh, suburb that is more frightening is Heathfield because no one has ever been able to find Heathfield. In fact, most people don't know if Heathfield actually exists. We know it exists on the map, but no one's ever been able to go into Heathfield. You think you're going into Heathfield, Heathfield and you end up in retreat. Let that be. I'm not even taking questions on that. That is true. I only speak truths. And so there we were, we were brought into the lockdown and then it got extended and then extended again. And then we went from level four to level three, then level three plus plus. Uh, then you added two levels. Um, Bashira, lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us, lovely lass. I'm just telling the people how confusing this lockdown period has been. It really has been that roller coaster that people are, are talking about, hasn't it? Um, and so I think that for most of us, Every day is a new little adventure. You kind of, as you open your eyes, you have to kind of adjust and think, what's this day going to be like for me? Uh, am I upbeat? Am I feeling a little down? Am I feeling scared? Am I feeling kind of fearless and courageous? Am I going to take on the world? And uh, as much as you think you can predict what you're going to feel at the beginning of the day, you don't. You open your eyes and what you're feeling, that's what you live with for the next 24 hours. So it is a, a kind of strange thing. The Cape Argus now, what have they said? The world is a tragedy to those who feel, but a comedy to those who think. Oh, I like that as a quote. Yeah, I think for a comedian, you know, people often ask, and this is true whether you're in a pandemic or not, the world of a comedian is a strange one. I see and experience everything that everybody else does, i.e. I get as irritated or frustrated or joyful or excited about whatever it is that happens in all of our lives. The difference is that after a couple of minutes or maybe a couple of hours, that experience kind of shifts itself into a different part of my brain. And then I start thinking, how can that experience 
be communicated to other people in a way that might elicit laughter. And then I try and find an angle on it. So I often say that a comedian looks at the world slightly askew, whereas you might look at it straight on. I will look at it slightly at an angle and from this perspective. And that slight change in perspective uh, can give you that comedy angle that comedians are looking for. And so we're always processing stuff in a slightly different way, which makes for kind of exciting uh, things happening in our little brain. I, I don't always know. Hello, lovely Michelle. Nice to see you. Mwah. Um, I hope you're all right, Lass. So how do we deal with all of this madness? I, what has been fascinating to me is how people have, as, and this is not unexpected for me, I think. <laughs> do you smoke, bro? I don't. And I think that, uh, Mike, uh, that's one of the reasons why I can come to you with at least a little bit of joy and pleasure in my voice. Even the way you have written that, do you smoke, bra? There's an underlying desperation. There's a sadness there to you, Mike. I understand it, sir. And I just hope that you have a little co connection, a little contact for cigarettes somewhere on that uh, black market, because that's what everybody else is doing, it seems to me. Hello there, uh, Aristotle. Thank you for, is it Arist Arist Aristote? Aristote, good name. It's, it's part of Aristotle. It's leaning towards Aristotle. And then somehow your parents got bored, didn't they? And they just went to Aristote. And that's fair enough, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's been interesting to me as a comedian to watch how people have gravitated towards comedy and laughter. You hear it um, now as we're starting to move amongst each other in work environments or even in the malls or whatever. You hear people laughing in the face of adversity. And that has always been the kind of response universally in moments of great tragedy. Human beings to release the fear, the anxiety, the pain, laughter is the way to go. And so I saw something on Facebook today, someone saying, is it time that we stop making jokes about Corona, you know, with all the terrible high numbers and, and the increasing number of fatalities, not just in this country, but around the world? Is it time to stop making jokes? And immediately five or six people went, no, no, no. And I get that. I get that people need to laugh, even in the worst of experiences, in the worst of times. Hi, Alicia Daniels. Nice to see you, lass. Well, not to see you, to see your little name, to see your little name float up there. Um, so how do we deal with it? Well, for me, uh, it's trying to continue making comedy. Uh, I've done an online show and I've tried to share some of my um, bits and pieces from my stand-up shows from the past. I've been lucky enough to be doing what I do, um, not only stand-up comedy, but performing professionally for 23 years. And so I have a whole back catalogue of work and I've tried to release that on my Facebook page and Instagram pages and on Twitter and you can find me on social media and, and, and see some of those extracts. If you've never seen my work, it's a nice way to kind of start. Um, and it's been nice to kind of just let people remind people that as strange and unprecedented and alarming as these times can be, the one comfort is that we're all in this together. Every single one of us, not just here in this province, around the country and indeed around the world. And, in that way, I think there's something that draws us together, that creates a community. Hi, Ian. Thanks for joining, pal. Um, laughter is the best medicine, says uh, Ilana. You're quite right, Ilana. Unless, of course, you've broken your hip. Um, uh, uh, giggles and guffaws are not going to help you. You should see uh, a medical practitioner and sort out your hip. I don't know if you have got problems with your hips, Ilana. You don't strike it. Polakau is a good surname. Uh, can let me Polakau. It wants to be a province, doesn't it? Polakwane, but it doesn't quite get there. A good laugh heals a lot of hurts. Uh, I do think that's true. Um, it heals the hurt in the sense that uh, in the community of laughter, what I found in the shows that I've done, and I was lucky enough to do a, a show called Defending the Caveman for nine years, and that show in particular, which played to hundreds and thousands of people across the country over many, many performances, is that there's something unifying. When you sit in a darkened auditorium with three, 400 other people, and we're all laughing at the same things, the realization is that you suddenly go, oh, I'm not in this alone. I'm not the only one who saw that or thought that was true or experienced that. In fact, there are people around me who've had the same experience. And I think that's uh, quite satisfying and comforting is probably a good thing. Lovely Christine Skinner. Thank you for joining us, Lass. Christine is the most brilliant publicist and uh, an amazing woman as well. And I'm grateful that she has helped organize uh, this evening's little chat. So thanks for joining us, Christine. Um, so yeah, we've I've done one online show. 
Uh, a lot of the comedians, Mark Lottring, Rob von Furen, Nick Rabb, Stuart Taylor's done a number. People have been putting out this content and it's been interesting how people have gravitated towards the need to laugh. And I don't think that's going to change. I think we're in a strange time now, now that we're in the middle of level three and we can go to work. Most of us can go to work and we can go uh, to restaurants now only in small numbers. People think it's kind of re reverting to normal, whatever a normal is. And yet I think now that we're five or six days into that second phase or third phase, I think people are suddenly starting to realize that, in fact, no, it's not a normal. It's something different. And in fact, it's n it doesn't feel that good to go. You want to support your local restaurants. I've already I went to a restaurant the other night, Sawadi, which is my favorite Thai restaurant. I wanted to support them. They're a small business. You know, that's one of the things we can do with each other is 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 to try and support the smaller businesses. Um, and And it was lovely to see them and to sit and have a meal. And yet it just didn't quite feel the same. And I'll try to do that. I'll try and go and support and have a meal out. But I also think most of us are still wary of the huge risk that this pandemic uh, threatens us with. And people are, I th still think the, the golden rule is stay at home, stay safe, be, wear the mask, bathe in Dettel. Throw yourself in Dettel is what I say. Alan, time for another show. Come on, says Wayne Sparrow. Yes, sir. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, you will hear it here first. The 1st of August, uh, four Saturdays time, I will be doing a live streamed uh, stand-up show. Um, and I think the title is, we came up with this today, Screening with Laughter. Screening with Laughter. So an image and uh, details will be released in the next day or two on my social media platforms. Wayne, so you can get booking and jump in there and we should have some fun. I've been writing some new stuff. Hello, Carolyn Lewis. Uh, we love you and the laughs you bring. Thanks, Christine. I, I think that, you know, for me, it's also been comforting to take this time and to to see what other comedians and entertainers are doing. You know, I'm, I'm not just a stand-up comedian. I, I'm very proud of the work that I do in the world of stand-up comedy, but I studied as an actor at UCT all those many years ago. And there's a real problem at the moment, not just in this country, but around the world with the performing arts. Because what we've come to realize... And it's not that we didn't realize that initially. I just think it's been brought home in quite a big way is that, uh, wait, do a minute, do a minute with a mask on. I want to see something. All right. What? Yeah, how's that? Nothing. I don't know. Um, what, what we've come to realize in the world of performing arts is that our, um, what we trade in is, is audience interaction. What we need at the very heart of theatre, Peter Brook, the famous theatre practitioner, says for theatre to exist, you need only two things, three things, actually. You need a space, and that space could be anywhere. It could be an empty room. It could be a floor space. You need someone who's going to do something and somebody who's going to watch. If you have those three elements, you have potentially you have theatre. Now, for most of this lockdown, we haven't had somebody who could watch. The government announced last week that they are opening up theatres and cinemas, um, but only with a, a maximum of 50 people per venue. And, you know, as much as I think there's an appreciation that we're moving to a new phase and that we're trying to open stuff up, 50 people in most theatres, you can't open that business. The economics of it don't allow for it. There's no ways you can pay rent and electricity and all the stuff that goes into the theatre, plus all your staff, plus theatre salaries, plus the theatre take their cut and play to 50 people. So for the moment, that has become um, something that can't happen. It's, it's not possible to open theatres. And in fact, I've been in strong conversation with almost all the theatres in Cape Town. I don't know any of them that are opening. Maybe uh, the little 50-seater, what was the Alexander Bar, which is now the Courtyard Playhouse, Playhouse Courtyard, the Courtyard Play, I don't know what it is, but they, they might be able to open, I don't know, I haven't heard anything from them, but certainly not Theatre on the Bay, the Baxter, the Fugard, Artscape, none of those can afford to open under those circumstances. And so for another month or who knows how much longer, there will be no space for performers, technicians, directors, designers, backstage crew, front of house staff, um, catering staff, bar staff, all of those publicists like Christine, all of those people who form part of this amazing labyrinth and machine that is the theatre and arts community sit with another month with no salaries. Now, I think we can be interesting and we can be creative about it. We can still create work 
uh, in different ways, in different spaces. And we've got to start thinking. Obviously, online is one possibility. We've just had the Grahamstown Arts Festival being run virtually and digitally. And uh, by all accounts, it had been done brilliantly. I caught a couple of shows really beautifully put together. Yes, there were some issues technically. There are always going to be issues technically. We're living in a third world country where connectivity is a, is a concern. Uh, and one can't have a glass of wine at a venue or restaurant. Just compounds the issue. Yeah, you're quite right, Angela. Uh, there's so many. There's so many interlocking features. You suddenly realise how an economy actually works and how we're all depending on each other. And you can open up a small segment of the economy, even two thirds of the economy, and it somehow doesn't work if you don't open up everything. And yet we also understand that you can't necessarily open up everything at this point. So it's a complex issue. You certainly understand the the difficult decisions that have to be made by the government. Some of the decisions make sense. Some of them you would like to see some reasoning because it might not make sense to all of us. But um, we've got to start thinking out of the box. One of the things I'm going to be doing for my next online show is to have a little audience. I've been allowed now by the government. I can have an audience. I won't be able to get 50 people into the studio, but I could probably get an audience of 15 to 25. And that'll add an element to my live show. At least I'll have something to bounce off. Because what I've suddenly realized is that for my shows, particularly in my stand-up uh, capacity, but even doing theater, is there's a beautiful energy and um, magic that exists between the performer and the audience. And it doesn't have to have the audience laughing. Just their presence, their mere presence, creates a kind of uh, frisson. That's a French word, frisson. It means frisson. I don't know what it means. I don't speak French. But there's a, there's a kind of magic and a sharpness and a life that starts to be created. And that's been missing from some of the online stuff. I think people are starting to get better at it. We're starting to work out how to communicate with this camera, how to make this screen work for us, how we can communicate with people in various ways. And so I think the next iteration of all these shows will be interesting as we as we go along. Charlie says, live stream the theater, live stream the theater performance. It would be like recording a show in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try and see if I can see, see, see more. Sell tickets for both. That's certainly one of the possibilities, uh, Charlie. Absolutely good call. Um, the problem uh, at the moment, and, and again, here's new problems are found as we are given new information. And so, for example, we would have to buy royalties or rights if we did an overseas work. Let's say we did Zoo Story, Edward Albee, famous American playwright, and it's a two-hander. And I think, well, that's a nice play that I could do. We could shoot it, live stream it to a small audience, and then live stream it to a bigger crowd online. How do I get the broadcast rights? Because those are different to the live performance rights. And so for the moment, we are waiting. We've sent off a number of correspondent mails to the various rights holders for plays and said, what is the next step? Have you started considering what the broadcast rights are? Because broadcast rights can be ridiculously expensive because mostly they held for television or film. Well, now we're talking digital and online. So there are new issues and I know there will be solutions that will appear and be made, but that can take its time as well. So I think that's one possibility and certainly something Peter Turin and I have been uh, talking about. Uh, Theatre on the Bay, you know, I've got a, I normally do the big Christmas show at the end of the year, and we did Lion King at the end of last year, and it, you know, it was such a fun uh, two months. We're planning for a Christmas show this year. We're hoping, maybe against hope, that Cape Town will be open again and that we'll be able to have audiences, and you know, we're still a number of months away, so maybe that is still a possibility. But if it isn't, we have to have a backup plan. Um, Alicia, yes, indeed, we can pay to watch online. Uh, Mike says, yep, I'm bald. You miss me in the front seat. <laughs> Oh, Mike, I can sense your baldness. And yet you're, 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 I mean, I, it's a pity you can't send a picture. Send me a pic if you can, Mike. I'd love to see how bald you are. South Africa's answer to Vin Diesel, Mike, is fun to whistle. Hmm. Um, so to come back to this idea of thinking out of the box and, and how do we find new ways of presenting stuff? Maybe it's going back to presenting theatre outdoors. I was lucky enough to do Richard III 18 months ago at Maynardville, and it was the last production that Maynardville did. The following year, they, they didn't have money. Um, there's now big talk and uh, lots of enthusiasm around bringing Maynardville open air theater back. By all accounts, performing outdoors might be a safer option. And maybe there's other sh uh, shows, not just Shakespeare's, but other types of productions um, that could be um, put out uh, in an outdoor venue. Maybe it's time to go back to door-to-door -to -door theater. 
to go really small to audiences of 15, 20, performing in tiny little spaces or open air spaces. Maybe it's time to bring theatre to homes and, and play it outside. When summer comes, spring and summer, which is only a couple of months away, can you believe that? Maybe it's time that we, we really started looking at this situation with kind of big, bold, broad strokes of creativity and ideas. It's, uh, it's certainly exciting, but let's not make any uh, mistake about this. It can also be very daunting, and there are a lot of people out there who haven't had money for four or five months now who are feeling it, who are very depressed. Uh, it's very hard to be creative uh, under these circumstances. So, again, I go back to the point I made right at the top of this little broadcast and say that you sometimes just got to live with whatever mood you're in on that day. You know, it's, it's very easy to say, well, I'm creating a new show and it's all very exciting. There are days when you wake up and you just think, ah, oh, fof, and you can't. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that as well. Sometimes you just got to live in whatever it is you're feeling and, and try and kind of get through that as best you can until the, the moment passes, because it will pass. This little roller coaster certainly goes up and it goes down and then it goes up again. So uh, we take the wild ride is my feeling. Ian says, all good and well to have an online show, but how does the dynamic work, especially since your audience is what heightens your shows and performance? Yeah, I mean, um, I'd like to think, Ian, obviously my style particularly has been built on uh, an interaction with an audience and, and what that brings. But I'd like to think that when I started, I, I hadn't yet developed that. So uh, I think there's other ways of creating similar um if you will, heightening of my performance. And obviously you try and get your material to be as strong as possible. Try and find an interesting angle. Try and focus on uh, being as sharp and as interesting and as uh, faceted as you can in the performance. So, and and uh, one of the things that this has given me an opportunity to do, and I know the other comedians have agreed with me on this, we've had lots of chats about this, is that it's nice to kind of revisit old material, either to rewrite, to refreshen it, but also to find audiences that we weren't playing to. You know, my years would fill up so quickly. I'd play a run in Cape Town and then go to Joburg. If I was lucky, I would do a festival or two, maybe in Grahamstown or go to an art club or um, a Wurtfius. But I would not get to Durban. I wouldn't get to uh, the Free State. I certainly wouldn't get to Port Elizabeth and East London. And some of these shows and, and uh, kind of material that I've sent out into the digital world has been met by audiences who have not seen me before. So that's been kind of exciting. Um, so those guys would, you know, get to enjoy stuff that they wouldn't normally. Uh, Kirsten Bosch Gardens, a, a good venue. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we're, I, I think as people are starting to wake up to this, the new possibilities um, and what the new normal might be, uh, you're starting to see all kinds of interactions. I've already heard a couple of people in chats with Kirsten Bosch Gardens. We've got to start looking at what are the venues uh, that, that can present themselves with, you know, potentially um, safer, safer parameters. Um, the, the next question is, when will we get to a point where people will feel safe? I don't know how you guys are. You know, sitting at home, it's uh, in discussions with the heads of like the Fugard and Theatre on the Bay and even the Baxter. You know, it's all very well for us to go, well, people won't come out. What we have noticed is whenever they've opened up a beach, whether it's in America or like here, when they've uh, opened up the, the lockdown ever so slightly, people were quick to rush out, fill up the Seapoint promenade, go to the beach, go walking into the forest. You don't only need to drive past Newlands Forest on the weekend and to see those two or 300 cars lining the sides of the highway to know that people might be scared of the pandemic, but it hasn't stopped them from going out. So my feeling is that when we do open a theatre properly, with all the safety restrictions, with all the protocol observed, I think people will want to go out and enjoy. We are social creatures intrinsically. We are uh, developed and brought and put together that way. So um, I think that we, I'm looking forward to when we do get to whatever that new normal is, and it might only be in a year's time, I'm hoping it'll be slightly sooner, that, that people will not only go out and enjoy all the br brilliant kind of uh, facets of live performance, whether it's concerts or um, ballets or opera, stand-up comedy. Also, because we are going to be so bored of watching Netflix and Showmax and whatever it is that SABC is offering. Is SABC still offering anything? <laughs> uh, Whitney says, ha have you or will you incorporate the South Africa you've seen in the last few months into some of your content coming up? Um, yeah, I mean, one of the problems with this lockdown has been that there's 
the only thing that's been happening is lockdown, isn't it? We've kind of got COVID phobia and everyone's just COVID centric and, and everyone's talking about the same stuff. So it's, it's, it is quite hard to come up with new angles on stuff that stays fresh. So for example, if I were to write jokes now about what levels we're on or um, the fact that we don't have cigarettes, a friend of mine wrote a brilliant sketch, spent the whole week editing the sketch about the fact that cigarettes were going to be available and how wonderful and the, uh, how the, the public was going to react to that. And he edited it and spent hours in the editing room, put music to it. And the day he was about to release it online, uh, the government said that they are banning cigarettes again and that they weren't going to be released. So sometimes you can't move quick enough for the change in news. So yes, obviously, I try and keep up to date and try and mention as much stuff as I can. But uh, we're in a tricky time where there's not that much new stuff happening. We're all experiencing the same stuff. So we can't sing in church still. We can't sing in church still, Mike. There you are, you see. Um, are you... <laughs> I, I suggest with your baldness, I, I see you as a base. I would imagine you're a base. Ian, and I feel quite safe watching you on here. But in an audience of one of your shows, I'm terrified. <laughs> oh, bless you, sir. I'd like to think that I treat my audience with some love and respect and that when I do tease or, or interact with them, that um, I take, uh, I'm as self-deprecating to me as I am to, to other people in the audience and, and we have a bit of fun. But uh, yes, you are safe there, little Ian, wherever you're sitting. Probably in Plumstead, that's my feeling. I'm, that's what I'm getting off you. I'm just checking the time here. I don't, I don't have an idea of what the time is. Um, so yes, uh, any other questions? What do you want to know? I We were caught in, um, in the middle of a really brilliant and fun experience for me. I was so fortunate to be able to um, be part of a production called The Producers, written by the brilliant um, American... Uh, American comic Mel Brooks, and he had created this uh, fantastic movie in the 1970s, and then the music, the Broadway musical in 2001, and um, Peter Turin and I had been talking about doing it for a long, long time, and we finally got it together, and we rehearsed in uh, January of this year, and Feb and March, we were up and running, we still had two weeks left of our Cape Town run, which was going tremendously well, and then we had a whole 10 weeks in Joburg planned, when of course lockdown kicked in. And so that, you know, those plans have been put on hold. And um, uh, Ashleen would love to come to, uh, to one of my shows. Well, uh, Les, uh, I would welcome you there. Uh, look out for the, the stuff online and come and find me on Facebook or uh, Instagram. And uh, we'll let you know those details. Otherwise, once this has all gone away, we'll see you at Theatre in the Bay or at the Baxter or at the Fugard, wherever I'm playing. Um, Ian says, not quite, but moving there soon. <laughs> oh, the madness. Uh, yeah, so we were part of this amazing show called The Producers and having so much fun. And then, of course, real life was uh, arrested, as it were, by this strange pandemic. And uh, we've kept in contact the cast. And every now and then we have a big Zoom call and try and catch up. And uh, we're we're hoping uh, to still do that Joburg tour early in, in 2021 and maybe even come back to Cape Town and finish the run here and maybe do two, month, uh, two weeks. But uh, again, uh, those decisions... Um, oscillate, oscillate. That's a word I wasn't expecting to use on a Tuesday. Oscillate from the Latin oscilleo, oscillere, oscillui, oscillitum, oscillui late. I don't know if that's true. It could be. Uh, Trevor Barrett says, masks and gloves, it's a no-brainer as a commercial photographer. In 1968, I worked as a photographer on the Argus with, with Jimmy, Pat, Errol, names you might not know. I sold a Nikon 600mm F4 lens to the Cape Argus 94 for their cricket. That's amazing. Yep, masks and gloves. Uh, Trevor, that's amazing, pal. Uh, you know that we heard news today about um, uh, a number of newspapers and magazines going under, uh, some of them only moving across to, to digital. The Cape Argus, we know, you know, the, the Cape Times, the Cape Argus, they press on and, and one of the few newspapers that are still being published around the world, this is an issue. So the world is changing all the way, how we disseminate and assimilate and other words that I've just made up, information. Uh, it's become very strange. Nice haircut. Too scared to visit the salon. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, I did this uh, during this week. Uh, just a little nip. You should have seen it before. There was hair growing all kinds and in and then some of the hair had come up and then through mouth and then out like that. So uh, I did it myself. <laughs> If you believe that, you believe anything. Rihanna, why didn't you? Why didn't the sick guy get the joke? It flew. It flew over his head. Rihanna, there's no need to be mean now. Settle down. All right. Um, the sick guy. 
Um, yes. So um, it is. It is strange out there. Uh, we are looking to to finding ways of dealing with this. You know, the laughter. I, I always say that laughter is. Uh, uh, it it brings people together because it creates that community. And what is incredible is that South Africans, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to perform overseas. I do a lot of stuff in the UK. I've, I've played in Los Angeles and New York um, and uh, on one or two occasions um, in other venues around the world. And as brilliant as the audiences are around the world, South Africans have the most extraordinary sense of humor and a wide ranging sense of humor. Now, part of that might be because of the strange history that this country has. We have so much drama and pathos and pain and awfulness that has gone into the history of our country, I think that we've developed a sense of humor to cope. And I talk here about ordinary citizens, and it's why such brilliant satirists like Peter Dirk Ace have survived and created an amazing uh, career in this country, because when we laugh at stuff, we see it in a different light. Go back to my point of seeing the world from a slightly different perspective. And when you see it in a different perspective, it doesn't feel as painful sometimes, or at least you see something that you might not have seen before. Uh, how was the flight into Cape Town, says Mike Jones. Uh, no, uh, uh, how was the flight into Cape Town, Mike? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you on tick, pal? That, that makes no sense. I've been here. I'm Cape Town based. I'm, I live in Cape Town. I miss going out, says uh, Shane. Yeah, I think it's, have you stayed at home the whole time, Shane? Um, good for you. I mean, I think I certainly miss it. My whole, my whole, um, lifestyle is built around interactions with people and listening to people and observing. There's nothing better for me during the day when I'm performing at night than just go and sit at a coffee shop uh, for an hour or two with a book, but always with my ear open and with my little beady eye just over the page, um, now over the mask, and watching people and listening to people. Um, thanks, Monica. I appreciate that. Yeah, I miss live theater as well. You know, there's been some great uh, stuff that's been streamed, uh, not just from local producers and, and practitioners, but, um, you know, the National Theatre have put out stuff. If you follow any of the big theatres around the world from New York or, or the West End, Broadway or West End, there's some incredible stuff put online. And yes, there is something that you miss. People have said to me, oh, don't you think putting all of this stuff online will make people not go to the theatre? No, I don't believe that for one second. I believe that people know and realise the brilliance and special experience it is when you're live one-on-one, -on -one, when you can actually see the sweat on the brow, when you can see the little spittle, which might be very dangerous in these pandemic times, when you can actually hear the breath in between and that experience of sitting in an audience. And by the way, it's not just that way in towards the, the performer. It's also the community that you feel with other audience members. And uh, we all miss that. And we will go back to that. Here's something that I want to share with you. And I, I saw this as a meme the other day and I really loved, I loved it. It said... Don't ever forget that after great pandemics, there's always been a period of incredible growth, uh, economic boom, and more importantly, creative um, uh, growth and spurts. And the two that they referenced in 1918 was the um, Spanish flu. And then, of course, we had the Roaring Twenties, a whole decade that was famous for the kind of change and excitement and wonderful creative stuff happening in all the arts from uh, the art world to performing arts in music. The Roaring Twenties was a, a, a rich time. And then, of course, in 1957, uh, we had um, uh, the avian flu. And then that led into the 60s, the the the, the kind of um, incredible 60s, the which which, you know, also gave us gave rise to amazing music and theater and film. Um, and so I'm going to put some money on and say that after this pandemic, and let's not forget we're in the middle of a recession as well. We haven't even dealt with that as a country, this junk status. But even with that, I think we're going to go into a period where people are going to crave contact with others. We're going to crave that communication and that community, and we will rush to concerts and... Um, to live theater and to stand up. And we're going to have an incredible period of growth and spurt. Spurt. I didn't think I was going to say that, but I have. I said spurt. By the way, it's tough out there now with the Rand Pound Exchange and the Rand Dollar Exchange. Even the Rand Rand Exchange is not particularly pleasant. Even when you buy in Rand and they give your change back in Rand, it's worth less than what you would have paid if you hadn't asked for what you could have seen earlier, not having worn the mask and washed your hands. I don't know how to end that sentence. 
Um, Angela, I would love to hear you do a show on the changing world as we know, being monitored more now, more so than in other parts. Yeah, um, thanks, uh, Angela. Oh, I'm trying to find my way around the screen. It's quite small. I wanted to see what else you had to say. Uh, the, absolutely. And to answer Leslie Robinson's question, are you planning another live online performance? I am on the 1st of August, so in three and a half weeks' time. And um, it'll be a, a live performance with uh, some recorded bits in between. We'll be shooting with a small audience, uh, audience of 15 to 20. So we might even be able to get some of you as be part of that. Uh, you can go to my f Facebook page, which is Alan Committee. You can find me on Instagram at Alan Committee or Twitter at Alan Committee. You can also sign up on my website. Go to alancommittee.com uh, or .coza, that website. Uh, has a live, do uh, you can join the database and I don't spam people. I only send a, a newsletter maybe once every two months, but it'll tell you exactly what we're doing and what the online show is all about. And you can buy tickets through Quicket. I crave human interactions, says uh, Diane, Dion. Quite right, don't we all? Trevor, 21.47 South African run to the pound. Is that right, sir? Yesterday. That's a thing and a thing. Well, uh, when's the Lions tour? I think that's next year, isn't it? So that'll be interesting for all those uh, lovely um, Brits coming to South Africa. They'll be, if, if we're allowed international travel and to welcome our friends from over the seas into our country, I think they'll have a really good time. <coughs> That's a, not a COVID cough, by the way. That was just me clearing my throat. Shane, workshops and back. Yes, like you said, we social beings and in that person. But we have a new normal, I think. Yeah, we do. I am friends with Jessica Soul, the lovely Jessica Soul, the brilliant, delightful Jessica Soul, a fine actress. I hope she's well. Please send her love and greetings. Um, so, yes, folks, I don't know if there are any other questions or uh, you'd like to know anything. Um, I guess we've got to stay positive. Why wouldn't we? What else are we going to do? We haven't got time for negativity. We've got to keep breathing. We've got to wake up each day, take that big breath, look to the day and try and see what it offers us. Because every day does offer us a little something, even if it's just sitting very still and trying not to be too depressed, because even those days are, are part and parcel of, uh, of what we're doing, of, of what, our, what our world is about, I guess. But um, try and embrace this new normal. Support the small businesses, support South Africa, support South African businesses and South African made stuff. As we sl slowly start opening up the economy, I think that's very important. And for all you wonderful folk who've listened to me for these last you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, um, when we do finally open up, go and support those young artists, the young comedians, the young musicians, the young um, actors, the writers, the directors. Go and see their work um, because they're going to need all the help they can get to rebuild and and for many of them starting you know, from anew. Go and support the small theatres again um, as well. And the big, well, support all theatre if you can. We, 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 it's going to be tough. We see this, the West End has had an incredible, they've just had a huge um, injection of one, I think 1.5 billion pounds into the arts industry from their government. Now, you know, that's because the West End theatre industry is such a huge part of both London's infrastructure and uh, the, the UK as a whole. We don't play such a big part, our uh, arts industry, that's the honest truth. But it's still an important part of the growth and the soul's health of our country. So if you can, go out and support. Ian, how have you managed to survive? I'm sure not with being able to have gigs during these trying times. Yeah, it's been tough. Uh, most days have been fine. I've been busy writing and trying to dream up future projects for when we can. But, I, you know, if I'm honest with you, some days are, are really tough. And um, I don't feel like creating stuff and I don't even feel like laughing. Luckily, my little mind is is quite weird and even when I'm trying not to laugh about stuff or I don't feel I can laugh something silly will present itself in this brain lockdown is tough if you're a hugger yes I agree Mike I agree Trevor opportunities are what we need to help the up and coming youth yeah agreed um <laughs> Mary many coronaviruses jokes out there it's a pandemic yes Rihanna I like it look at you creating pandemic because pandemic and then pun and then you punned on pan but using the word pun so you've actually done it on many levels that's very good uh, people don't know this but i well some people will uh, but i am an ex-teacher i used to teach english and drama i don't teach anymore the restraining order is very specific about that but um i do like wordplay and i love um the power of words i think that's one of the things i've missed as well it's just that 
that lovely interaction between me and an audience because it does become an interaction. Asking people and getting responses and it can take you down lovely little rabbit holes of information and um, discovery. So uh, all of this will return. Of this I have no doubt. And when it does, whenever that is, we will be together and hugging and joyful and we will revel in live theater and live performance again. I promise you, I promise you, and I promise you again, that will happen. I look forward to it. In the meantime, look out for the live shows, or rather the online shows, uh, which is kind of partly live, but not really. And, uh, and, try, and um, try and get laughing. Try and see this, this, this madness for what it is. Don't give it too much power and weight. Only when it needs it do you give it, and sometimes you've got to take it away to give yourself power back again. Angela, a restraining order. That's true. And that's quite late that you've joined. That, that We did that joke a while ago. Keep up. What a refreshing chat. You're very kind, sir. I thank you. I hope, I hope, uh, yeah, I've shared some of my little silly thoughts. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the Cape Argus. Uh, keep reading. Keep supporting um, online if you can or buying, whether it's newspapers or uh, magazines. There's so many people out there who are dependent on the joy that they can bring you through the process of the written word and, of course, the performing word and the performing arts. And um, we'll get through this. That's, of that, there's no doubt. Goodness, wish you had been my teacher. Oh, you're very kind, Whitney. I'm not sure that – I mean, I don't know if I taught that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was all right. I love teaching. I will say that. It was a – an incredible time. I taught for eight years over a number of different schools from Weinberg Senior Secondary to Westerford, a Harshall School for Girls, Plumstead for a couple of terms. Um, and it was a, a brilliant time in my life. And I, it was also, I didn't realize it at the time, but it helped build a, the beginnings of an audience for me. And it also taught me how to engage with an audience, how to read a room. So if the restaurant is open, why can't the comedy clubs open? That's a good question, uh, Shane. Um, there are some, I'm, I, I suspect some of the comedy clubs will open now that they've uh, opened up some of the theatres with small crowds. So watch the space. I suspect we'll see some announcements in the coming weeks. But again, with only 50 people, it has to be a very small little environment. And of course, small venues or small rooms aren't necessarily the healthiest rooms. So it's, uh, it, it's a little bit of a vicious circle. Karen, thank you for cheering us up. Can't wait to get back to the theatre and reading about it in the Cape Argus. Bless you, Karen. Yes, indeed. Agreed. Thanks, Masa Kunt. Awe. You've been lovely. Look after yourselves. Have a beautiful rest of the Tuesday night. If you do live in Heathfield, you're, you don't, is what I'm telling you. You don't live in Heathfield. You're living in retreat. If you live in Bergfleet, thoughts and prayers to you. And we will see you uh, in live theatre at Theatre on the Bay in December, I'm hoping. But if not, on the 1st of August... Screening with Laughter, Alan Committee. Find me at Alan Committee on my Facebook page or on Instagram or join me on my website on a mailing list, www.allencommittee.com. Bye-bye, lovely people. Bye, Mandy. Mwah. Love you, Les. Bye, Carolyn. Go, go. The dinner's burning. Go, go, eat. Good night, all.